Hello there, it's Tony Buck again. This is a lime tick deer station I built on some private property. As you can see, it has a little plywood roof. This is about four years old now. Four posts, which I've had to double up on over the years. It has a small table. And on the table is um, some salt. A big block of salt, which we can buy from the local hardware store here. Cost about five dollars. And these foam sausages, I call them, they're just cloth filled with foam. I can buy those from the hardware store. I buy them at uh, Tractor Supply Company, it's called. There's the block of salt I'm pointing to right there. And what happens is, uh, with lime tick, uh, the deer get the lime tick off the plants around them, and then they transport them all over the countryside. So if you can get some chemicals onto the deer, it kills the lime tick and prevents the spread of lime tick. Now there's the sausages, as I call them, and they're all hanging there. This is what the deer do. They put their head in, and they lick the salt, and they get the chemical that we put on them all over their chops, and then they embrace each other and spread it on each other. Um, you have to reinforce this a little bit because it's a bit rickety, but the deer don't push it over. But here's, it was two by fours originally, and you can see where the stag, I guess, has just rubbed his horns down there and worn this thing away. So I know they're coming to it, of course, and they're licking the salt, and they're using it to rut, I suppose. And this is great. And they also lick the ground because the rain washes some of the salt down there. And uh, therefore, they're, they're rubbing themselves on the actual um, machine itself. I call it a machine. As you can see, it's very simple, two by fours, it's just, just regular wood. And here and there I've had to brace it to stop it from, you know, falling over, whatever. As I say, it's at least four years old, and the deer come to it all the time. The dimensions, uh, the table is 24 inches by 24, or 2 feet by 2 feet. It's just a piece of plywood with some 2 by 4s around the edge. The table is 28 inches high off the ground. And the roof line is about 56 inches off the ground, 58. I start these applications in mid-April, and I do them about once a month throughout the summer to keep them moist. I use latex gloves, throwaway kinds, uh, first of all, on my hands. And then I put a pair of leather gloves over the top of that. And then I, I mix the bifenthrin with vegetable oil. Now this is an 8% mixture originally, and I put half an ounce to a gallon, okay? That's what I do. I put, that's a half a gallon, so it's that's a quarter of an ounce mixed in with vegetable oil. And I pour the vegetable oil. You can use permethrin or bifenthrin, um, and you can buy that commercially. And then I put the vegetable oil bifenthrin mixture into a, you know, an ordinary soap, a dishwashing soap bottle. I used one. And that's what I, I use a whole bottle of that per application. So I just start pouring this oil onto these uh, foam sausages. And you can see why I use the leather gloves, because it helps me to smooth it on. Now look what I'm doing here. I'm actually putting the oil mixture onto the woodwork as well, because the deer sort of rub themselves. You can see their hairs on the wood. They rub themselves on the wood, and especially the stag, I guess, rubbing his horns and things like that. And so we want them to get this mixture on their skin so that it kills the ticks when they get onto the deer. It kills the ticks very quickly, I'm told. It's not a very powerful, uh, well, it's powerful for ticks, but it's not something to worry about. I believe uh, army uniforms are soaked in per permethrin uh, as a matter of course, so that uh, if the guys lay down in, in tick-infested areas, it, it, they get killed. The, the, the ticks get killed on their clothing. So I rub this, I learned this because I saw all the, the markings from the deer. I cover the whole wooden structure with the oil um, by fenthrin mixture. And I put it on all the sausages, of course, so that when they put their heads in to lick the salt, they get it on their chops. And then they embrace each other, of course. They, they rub against each other and they spread it all over each other. Um, in the last couple of years, two hunters have pulled deer off of this property, and I've taken a good look at those deer, and there's not any sign of tick 
on their head or ears or anywhere. We've got the uh, healthiest deer in our area. We don't necessarily want that, but we do want them not to spread ticks. So this is a simple way to help control the lime tick population in your area. Good luck.